Hey, I just wanted to let you know that this is the 100th episode of Crack Your Bible since I started this channel back in, well, basically the last of January of 2017. I'm so excited. So I hope you enjoyed the 100th episode. Hey everyone, I'm Rachel, and today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about the origins of Thanksgiving. Now that we have that kind of history of some of the things that we do in the United States to celebrate Thanksgiving, the cornucopia, the wishbones, the grains, giving thanks, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about Thanksgiving in the United States. Now, Thanksgiving is the last Thursday of the month of November, and it wasn't until officially 1942 that we had the first official Thanksgiving. It was officially proclaimed in 1941, but didn't go into effect until 1942. So that was the first legitimate official Thanksgiving. Now we need to go all the way back to the early 1800s and there's this woman named Sarah Hale and you are familiar with her work. You just don't know it because she's the one that wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah. <laughs> now anyway, she marries this man named David Hale. He is a lawyer and a prominent Freemason and they have five children and she is all about women's rights. Now she doesn't want women to get involved in politics but she gets involved in politics. She and her husband fancy themselves like very intellectual and for two hours a night from the hours of eight and ten they do a salon in their home where they just go and they read things and blah 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 and it's just the best of the 24 hours for her. She is so full of it. Now anyway when she is pregnant with her fifth kid two weeks before she's about to give birth her husband dies. So now she has five kids to take care of. So his Freemason brothers decide that they are going to fund Sarah Hale's literary works. So she produces a book of poems and all of a sudden, shock of shocks, when you get involved with the Masons, she gets involved with an Episcopalian minister who has a woman's magazine that needs an editress, an editor. And she becomes a prominent editor of the nation's first women's magazine. And then, as it happens, uh, these publications don't make money. So they become uh, merged with other magazines. And she was an editor for a long time. And she was very dismayed about how there weren't enough women writers. And she was all about women, 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 women. Anyway, back to the story. So this woman is very into like women's rights, but she's not a suffragette. And that's why people who are suffragettes, they don't really like her. But all of a sudden she gets on this kick that we need to celebrate Thanksgiving. We need to celebrate Thanksgiving. And it wasn't an official holiday. It was something that some people in some parts of the country, mainly the Northeast, celebrated throughout the year, sometimes October, sometimes in January. And she was adamant, we need to make Thanksgiving a thing here in the United States. And not just in the Northeast, not just in some select communities, everybody in the entire United States needs to celebrate Thanksgiving. So she kept petitioning various presidents, even though women aren't supposed to get in politics, according to her. And she was adamant, this needs to become a holiday and many presidents told her no we're not doing this many presidents told her this is a state's rights is issue if they want to have a certain holiday that's up for the states to decide she was not satisfied with this everybody needs to celebrate this holiday thanksgiving that she wrote about in one of her books you have to understand that sarah hale was not only doing this magazine, but she was also writing books. And she wrote a book about slavery. And she had kind of these weird beliefs because she didn't believe in emancipation of slaves. She believed in colonization and she wanted all of the slaves to be sent back to Africa where they can have Liberia. So she's really similar to 
kind of the leftist today where they're all about like women's studies and women, 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 but they're super patronizing to minorities and they actually hold some kind of like racist views about minorities. She's really similar to your gender studies type person today. So anyway, she writes President Lincoln. Now this is Lincoln, the one that's married to Mary Todd Lincoln, the one who was doing seances in the White House and went crazy in her later years. That Lincoln, the same Lincoln who said that if he could save the Union without freeing any slaves, he would, which is inscribed on his monument. Abraham Lincoln did not care about black people. He was not a great person. But she writes to him and she writes about how the president needs to officially declare this a holiday because it shouldn't be up to the states to decide whether or not this holiday is celebrated. The president needs to come out and say, we need to do Thanksgiving. Not once in her letter does she mention God. Not one time. It wasn't until Abraham Lincoln made his declaration about Thanksgiving that Abraham Lincoln mentions, oh, we're going to give thanks to God. Now, here's the thing. When she was petitioning for Thanksgiving, she wrote about it in her magazines for like 15 years. She said, oh, you know, why don't we have it on Thursday of November? Oh, you know, just off the top of my head, just, just thinking. That's really weird and specific, okay? So I did some digging. A lot of English history is imbued with Nordic and Germanic history. And of course, because we all come from Noah, we all have the same stories. And Thursday is Thor's day. Now Thor is a Nordic god who rides around a chariot that is pulled by two goats. And he is a red haired giant. Where do we hear this stuff from? Hmm. Oh my goodness. Like, can we ever get, can we get away from Nephilim? Apparently not. And then, and then, in the Germanic calendar, the Anglo-Saxon calendar, the month of November, which is the 11th month for us in our calendar as well, 11 in the Bible always signifies chaos, which I find quite interesting. November in Old English comes from the word Blotmanoth the month where all of the Norse people would sacrifice bulls to their gods and blot meant sacrifice and mont meant moon or month. So this was the sacrificial moon or the sacrificial month. And what people would do is obviously the harvest is finished and you don't want to have to feed all of these animals through winter in the harsh northern European winters. So what they would do is through the month of November, they would sacrifice their animals to the gods. So it was just killing fest. That's why the whole month was called the blood month or the sacrificial month. There's something really strange about Thor or Dinar or Jupiter or Zeus. And that's one thing that they all share in common. And that is they all use the symbol of the oak leaf and the acorn. Now, what do we see at Thanksgiving? Oak leaves and acorns all over the place. So it's not just a symbol of fall, it's specific symbolism relating to those gods. So Sarah Hale wasn't stupid when she decided, hmm, how about a specific day in November? And of course she says, oh, it's, it's easy to travel. You're back from your summer travels. I don't know about you, but traveling for Thanksgiving is a nightmare because the weather is terrible and it's a nightmare in modern day. I can't imagine what it would have been like in the 1800s where you didn't have the roads or the electricity or the transportation methods to travel to go see your family. That's insanity. This clearly has its roots in paganism. Now, around the same time as Blotmanoth, where you're sacrificing all these animals in Scandinavia, you had Alpha Blot. And that was a sacrifice to the elves at the end of autumn, after you've already harvested your crops. And what you would do is you would have a 
family celebration at home that was run specifically by the matriarch of the family. And it was just a family-only type holiday where you sacrificed to the gods, you stayed at home, and the mom was in charge of the feasting and the festival at home. Hmm, sounds like Thanksgiving to me. So this was the sacrificial month on the god Thor's day. Hmm, hmm, I don't know which god that we would be celebrating or giving thanks to when we're doing Thanksgiving. Especially when this woman never mentioned God, God the Father, in her letter to Abraham Lincoln. Now, after it became a holiday with Abraham Lincoln, like, every year the president would have to come out and say, like, oh, I am proclaiming Thanksgiving. It wasn't, again, until FDR made it an official holiday on the calendar that you didn't have to proclaim Thanksgiving every year. Before that, we only had Fourth of July and Washington's birthday. Once Sarah Hale became victorious with her Thanksgiving Day and it became official with Abraham Lincoln, she wrote about how Thanksgiving needs to be at the altar of the hearth. Sarah Hale wrote about how Thanksgiving is a holiday that is central to the hearth and to the altar. Really strange. This holiday is the domain of women and this goes right back to Ceres and Demeter worship. You have to remember that the elite always want people to be doing ceremonies in mass. That's why we have these music television shows where they're doing rituals. When more people are doing rituals, the more powerful the ritual is. So that's why the entire country needs to all be doing this ritual on this specific day because it makes the ritual more powerful when more people are involved in it. So when you're celebrating Thanksgiving, what you're doing is you are celebrating an old pagan religion that was revived by a woman who was married to a Freemason, was all about women's studies, was a woman writer who petitioned a man who was the president who was involved with a woman who did seances in the White House. They're the ones that revived this pagan tradition in the United States where they are giving thanks to Thor, Zeus, Demeter for providing them with things from the harvest and they are preparing for the time where Persephone is in the underworld married to Satan. That's what you're celebrating. Today, if some lady off of BuzzFeed was like, oh, you know what? We are going to revive some old pagan myths and celebrate the spirit of women and worship the old gods. Christians would be like, mm, no, definitely not going to do it. But because it happened before most of us were born, you have people, oh, I have to celebrate Thanksgiving. Like, look at what you are being sold. Thanksgiving is nothing more than paganism, given this air of, oh, it's sort of religious for Christians. Christians should come together and celebrate this. No, Christians should not celebrate this. This is just another garbage pagan holiday that was revived by what we would call today a social justice warrior. So don't celebrate Thanksgiving because you are being tricked. This is a garbage holiday and it has nothing to do with giving thanks to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is a pagan Nephilim God that you are celebrating with Thanksgiving. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. I would love for you to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.